What is a target market and why is it important? Well, here you're going to get some clear, direct answers. And if you're good, we'll dig into a whole lot more. Now, the reason why this is important is because identifying a specific market and subgroup to target in your business and in your marketing efforts is one of the first things that you got to do. So here, let's dig into some answers. Let's get some clarity about what a target market is and why it's important. I hope you're doing well, my friend. I am Jeff from 10tononline.com. Here, it's all about escaping the grind, building a fulfilling online business and launching a better tomorrow. All right, now, before we really get rolling here, what we need to do is we got to get you moving on the right track. And to help you along, I put together for you an online business jumpstart guide. This is a completely free, easy to follow, downloadable, printable PDF guide that gives you a blueprint and a solid strategy for you and your online business. Your free guide gives you a step-by-step -step set of insider strategies to guide you through the clear steps that you need to build your business. I've packed it full for you with powerful action steps that you can take right away, and it's loaded with valuable tools and resources for you too. Go and grab your free guide right now while you can, while it's still available over at 10tononline.com forward slash jump. Next though, let's dig into it. Let's dig into what this thing called a target market is and why it's so important. Let's start here. Now, a target market is sometimes referred to, sometimes called a niche market or a niche audience, but a lot of times I simply refer to it as your business's target market. Now, this is simply a group of like-minded people who all want the same sorts of things, who face the same sorts of challenges and problems, who share similar interests, who want similar results, who have similar goals. And my friend here, the more specific you can be, the better. This is what's referred to as narrowing down your audience. So most often what you'll be doing is you'll be identifying and targeting not just a market overall, but a sub market that exists within a much broader market. So for instance, you may want to build a business that's in the health and wellness market, but much more specifically, maybe you want to target people over the age of 50 who want to maintain and increase their energy. Or maybe you want to target and serve the fashion market, but much more specifically, that's the broad market, right? Much more specifically, you want to offer vintage motorcycle jackets and related items. These are just examples for you, so you get the idea. Here's one more. Maybe you want to target the home decor market, but much more specifically offering solutions and options to families on a budget who are DIY oriented. You get the idea here, I hope. There are many, many, many markets and every broad market is comprised of many, many, even countless sub markets or niche markets that are much more specific. Now this narrowing down, I've given you a handful of examples here. This narrowing down concept or process can be applied to any and every market imaginable. Now, here's why this is so important for you and for your business and for your marketing efforts. First of all, a big mistake that a lot of new business owners and entrepreneurs make is they think that everyone should be their customer, that everyone will want to buy their product or their service or whatever it is that they're selling. And by the way, this is okay. This is a lesson that all of us, all of us entrepreneur and business types have to learn. The truth is everyone is simply too many people. Everyone can't be your customer. Everyone is just way too unspecific. It's way too broad. I'll tell you one of the fastest ways that a new business owner can drive their business into the ground and become a card carrying member of the overpopulated business graveyard is to try to be all things to all types of customers. I know it sounds counterintuitive, especially if you are hungry and desperate for sales, but it is very important for your marketing to stand out and to stand for something. So this is sort of a, a kind of like a, this is who we are and this is what we're all about. And these are the sorts of things that we do. And these are the sorts of people who we serve. Look at the sorts of people who are in Nike commercials versus McDonald's commercials. This is exactly what I'm talking about. So this is why it's so important to identify a target market for your business. It doesn't mean, by the way, that you're going to be turning anyone away who isn't a part of your target market. McDonald's is perfectly happy selling 
Big Mac combos to athletes, and Nike is certainly happy to sell running shoes to pretty much anyone. But again, it's all about standing for something and meaning something for a specific group of like-minded people. All right, I hope this is making sense. Now next, here's another huge reason why it's so important for you to identify a target market, consider this, my friend. Right now, people who reside in these much more niche, much more specific sub-markets are having to tolerate and put up with products and services and solutions that aren't quite right for them. That's because much larger companies can only offer more broad, generic, kind of like one-size-fits-all products and services. In other words, they're just too big to bother with smaller, more specific markets. And man, let me tell you, this is a huge opportunity for entrepreneurs and business owners just like you. You are much more nimble. You can go into these smaller, overlooked markets and begin offering much more specialized and specific products and services that are a perfect fit for the exact sort of people that you wanna serve. Now, not only can any given market be divided into various, much more specific sub-markets, but there's also another very important way to look at any given market imaginable. We'll take a look at that next, but first, if you're seeking to make the leap into business, if you wanna build your own thing and you're wanting the clear steps to start and grow, then here's what to do next. Get yourself over to 10tononline.com forward slash free, and there you will find a free online business workshop. This is a totally self-paced online workshop. There, what you're gonna get is a proven roadmap that shows you the steps you need to take to get your ideas off the ground so that you can really start moving forward with clarity and with confidence. Your free workshop will help you to understand the business ropes and the basics of business, even if you're just starting out, even if you have little to no experience. Here, you'll discover how to minimize your risk, maximize your results, and really get moving in the right direction, even if you already have an existing idea for a business, or again, if you're starting from scratch and you're really not sure what products to sell. You will definitely want to bring a notepad and take detailed notes as we go. You don't want to miss it. Next though, as I say, not only can any given market imaginable, including the kind of market that you want to serve, be divided into much more specific niche sub-markets, but there's also another vital way, critical way, to look at any given market or submarket. Check this out. It's all based on price. Nobody's talking about this, but listen, every market and submarket that you can possibly imagine can be divided into three different types of customers or three different tiers. The first tier is, let's call them price conscious buyers. These are the sorts of customers who put the priority, their entire priority on the price ahead of anything else, including value. So for these sorts of customers, the only thing that matters is the price, not the long-term durability or value or anything like this, as I say. And the truth is these types of customers will be your greatest source of frustration and headaches. These sorts of customers, and this is just the straight truth, this is just how it is. These sorts of customers will demand the most, they'll demand the most from you, the business, they will pay the lowest price possible. They have the lowest loyalty for, for the businesses that they buy from, and they will be the most likely to ask you for a refund. They are a headache, I'm telling you. <laughs> ask me how I know. Now, you can certainly target this segment of the submarket that you're gonna be serving, but just be forewarned, a low price does not necessarily translate into more sales. So that is the first tier. Here's the second tier. The second tier is we could call them mid-range customers or mid-range buyers or value conscious buyers. These sorts of customers are a little bit more, I guess we could say middle of the road here. They will want value from your products and your services, but they also want to pay a low price. So here they're balancing price and value. So these sorts of customers are still price conscious, but they're not as price conscious as that first tier. They believe that price equals value and are oftentimes willing to pay a little bit more to have a better quality product. All right, here's our third and final tier, price tier or customer group that any market imaginable could include, and that is premium buyers. Now, premium buyers are high-end buyers. Here, customers want top value and top quality, 
and they have little to no regard for the price that they pay. It's this tier of each market that premium brands, brands like Audi and Estee Lauder and Tiffany and others, this is where they operate. Now at these higher tiers, you'll see much less resistance to price yet a strong demand for service and quality and very, very few hassles or headaches or refund requests. Again, these three tiers can be found in every market and submarket that you could possibly imagine, from healthcare to fashion to electronics, cars, handbags, you name it. So my friend here, you are not only selecting a market to operate within, you're not just targeting a specific sub-market or niche, but you're also selecting a price tier to operate within, or a price bracket, if you want to think of it that way, within that market. Now, I should mention something else that comes to mind, and this is crucial for you. Make sure that the specific sub-market that you're going to target and serve, and the price tier that you're going to be targeting, are comprised of groups of people who you actually want to work with. In other words, the sub-market that you're going to be working with, that price tier that you're going to be targeting, make sure you actually want to function and operate in that space. That's because there's absolutely no sense, there's no reason for busting your back to build a business that you ultimately wind up despising. Make sure you build a business that you enjoy running, serving the sorts of people who you enjoy serving, selling the sorts of products and services that you enjoy selling. The point, my friend of business, is not only money and sales. There's definitely a big fulfillment and enjoyment element at play here, so just be careful. Make sure you are building something that you will ultimately enjoy running, serving the types of people who you enjoy being around for a long, long time. So that is the deal, my friend. That is what is up with target markets and why they're so important. Now next, let's put the right plan of action into place for you. It all happens in your online business workshop over at 10tononline.com forward slash free. Bring that notebook. I'll see you there next.